Hi, everybody. What a lot of cats. I think I need your help counting them today. So today, let's think about counting. Now, I know when I have to count things, I have to organize them. And so I'll take things and I'll put them in groups, but sometimes I put them in rows. Maybe I'll make a row of cats to help me to count. Okay, let's do that. All right. How many cats do you think there are? There sure are a lot of cats. I don't know that I've ever seen this many cats at one time. Let's see. Here's the last cat, and I still don't know how many cats there are. I think I need something to help me. Well, maybe this will help me. Let me draw a line underneath all of the cats. Okay, does that help me? Well, I think I need to do one more thing. Let's make it a special line. Let's make it a number line. Okay, so let's count them with our number line. Let's see. One, two, three, four cats, five, six, seven, eight cats, nine, and you probably already knew this, there are ten cats. Now what if all of these cats have been stuck in the house all day long, and some of them decide to go out in the garden? How would that change our counting? Well, let's see. What if this cat makes its way first into the garden? What do we have now? Well, I can see that we have nine cats in the house and just one in the garden. Let me write that down. Nine cats in the house and one in the garden, and we still have ten cats altogether. What if this cat follows? What do we have now? Well, I can see that we have eight cats in the house and two in the garden. So eight cats in the house and two in the garden gives us ten cats still. Okay. This one wants to be with the other ones in the garden, so it goes outside too. And what do we have? We have seven cats in the house and three in the garden. So seven cats in the house and three in the garden give us our ten cats. This cat finds the back door open, sneaks out into the garden, and what do we have now? I see that we have six cats in the house and four in the garden. So six cats in the house and four in the garden give us our ten cats. This cat makes its way out too. And what do we have now? I can see that we have... Oh, that's interesting. Do you see it too? I see that we have the same number of cats in the house as we do in the garden. Well, we have five cats in the house and five in the garden. So five cats in the house and five in the garden gives us ten cats altogether. Okay. This cat makes its way outside. What do we have now? I see that we have four cats in the house and six in the garden. Four cats in the house and six in the garden and ten altogether. This cat follows. And now we have three cats in the house and seven in the garden. So three cats in the house and seven in the garden and ten all together. This cat finds that back door open too, makes its way into the garden, and now we have two cats in the house and eight in the garden. So two cats in the house and eight in the garden to make ten cats all together. This cat wants to be with the others and finds its way into the garden. Now what do we have? Well, it looks like we have one lonely, lonely, lonely cat in the house. 
and many cats in the garden, nine cats in the garden. So one lonely cat in the house and nine cats in the garden to give us ten cats altogether. Are we going to leave that poor cat all by itself in the house? No, I think we need to open the back door and let it out too, so that it can be with its friends. Now, I like this now because I can see we still have our ten cats. Now, there are other things that I see too. I'm looking at all the numbers down here and I'm seeing interesting things. What are you seeing? Well, I see some number patterns. And here's the first number pattern that I see. I see the numbers counting. So I see 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So they're counting backwards. I see another one, too. Look at this. I see the numbers counting this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Looks like they're going in the opposite direction. Well, when I think about the opposite direction, I see something else. Look at the numbers across. I see that 9 plus 1 equals 10, and 1 plus 9 equals 10. I see that the 9 and the 1 can trade places to be 1 and 9, and they still make 10. It's like the 9 and the 1 are partners, and they can trade places, always making 10. Does this happen for the other ones? Let's see. Look here. 8 plus 2 equals 10, and 2 plus 8 equals 10. The 8 and the 2 can trade places to be 2 and 8 and still make 10. They're partners too. Look here. 7 plus 3 equals 10, and 3 plus 7 equals 10. The 7 and 3 can trade places to be 3 and 7, and still make 10. They must be partners too. And this one? 6 plus 4 equals 10, 4 plus 6 equals 10. The 6 and 4 trade places to be 4 and 6 to make 10. 6 and 4 must be partners. 5 plus 5? Well, if they trade places, they're going to be the same. That's not quite so interesting. But there is one other thing that interests me. Let's look at the first pairs. So let's look at 9 plus 1 equals 10. And 1 plus 9 equals 10. Okay. Now, I notice that the 9 could be the first number, or it could be the second number. I also noticed that the 1 could be the second number, or the 1 could be the first number. No matter what, they still make 10, so they can trade places. Now, how does this help us think about our cats and counting our cats? Let's go back to our story. What was the story of this number sentence? If I go back to the beginning, I remember that this is nine cats in the house and just one in the garden. It was the first one to go in the garden. It made ten. And the story of this one? Well, you know this one. This is the one lonely cat in the house. And these are the nine cats having a great time in the garden. Okay, so the numbers can trade places just like the cats traded places. And we always end up with the same number of cats, ten cats. It's interesting. Well, now I know how many cats there are, and I learned a lot of other things about numbers along the way, too. That's great.